Hey! Nice to see you again. My name is Sam and welcome to my channel. I post bookish content once a week, sometimes twice a week. And if you like seeing my face, like seeing the rest of this video that I'm about to show you, I hope you subscribe and stick around because I like seeing you. So what am I doing today? Today, today, we're doing my five star prediction reads video. It's not like a tag, I don't think, but I've seen a couple people doing this where they're like books that they think that are gonna be five stars and I thought it'd be fun because I definitely do it subconsciously where I'm like I'm gonna love that book I just know I'm gonna love that book and yeah I wanted to you know share with you some of the books that I think I'm gonna love I've seen I think mostly I've seen people do these for like books that aren't out yet or that are coming out later this year but I thought I would do it with five books that are coming out later this year and then five books that I have on my shelf five was I mean, it, I wasn't like, oh, I'll find five. I actually, like, when I was looking at, like, all the books that I'm really excited for this year, I was like, okay, which five, like, which ones do I honestly think are going to be five stars? And it just happened to be five books. And I was like, oh, let's see if I can find five more on my shelf. So that's kind of how that happened. I'm going to give you guys a description of each of the books, like the official description, either on the back of the book if I have it in person or, like, from Goodreads if that's where I'm pulling it from and then I'm going to talk about like why I, I think this book is going to be five stars. If it's not out yet I'm also going to talk about the release date but let's be honest a lot of these are just like gut feelings and I don't want to keep repeating myself and be like I just feel like it's going to be five stars because I just feel like all of these are going to be five stars. Like that is just a major element of why I picked them all. Without further ado let's, let's just go into it and we're going to start with the five that I already have on my shelf. So first up is Lud... Lud? Lud in the Mist. This is by Hope Mirror. Mirrorlees? Mirrorlees? Lud is a prosperous, bustling little country port perched at the confluence of two rivers, the Dapple and the Dal. But the Dapple has its roots in the land of fairy, beyond the elfin marches and the debatable lands to the west, which was a great trial to Lud, a town that had long ago rejected any such fanciful nonsense as fairies and elves and the like. But when a fairy-influenced plague hits the town, something must be done. And it's lucky for Lud that its mayor, Nathaniel Chanticleer, is a man with his head firmly in the clouds. I'm so excited. Does that not sound amazing? I have been taking Neil Gaiman's master class on master class, and he mentioned this book, and he said that it is a sort of traveler guide. Uh, it sort of starts off as like a traveler guide to visiting Lud in the Mist, and then devolves into this like fairy tale story. And that was enough to tell me I wanted to read it. And just the whole concept is enough to tell me I'm going to love it. I'm a sucker for atmospheric type stories and this is what it sounds like it's gonna be. I'm also a sucker for like fairy and the real world type story. So like where, they're, where they meet, I guess, like where that sort of seam is between the real world and the fairy and like books that do the books and like movies that do this well. I think Stardust does it well, book form and movie form. No, the movie is better, but like Stardust is a great example. I feel like to an extent Labyrinth kind of does it well. Sabriel at the very beginning there's like a little like brick wall I think that like is between like the the, the magical world and the non-magical world like that kind of stuff is just I'm all for and, and Lord of the Mist is kind of like at the seam it sounds like. So atmosphere I'm I'm all there I'm here for it I'm here for it I'm also a huge fan of fairy tale type stories and I mean this this says it is a perfect fairy tale. So I just, five stars, five stars. I think I'm going to read this one in the summer. I think this is a book I want to read outside. In the humidity, I'm not going to lie. I feel like it's a book I want to read in the humidity. Lid in the mist, everyone. Lid in the mist. Next we have The Binding by Bridget Collins. I feel like I'm a little late to the party on this one. I feel like it was big a couple years ago when it came out, but I just like ignored it completely. But let's read the description. Imagine you could erase grief. Imagine you could remove pain. Imagine you could hide the darkest, most horrifying secret forever. Young Emmett Farmer is working in the fields when a strange letter arrives summoning him away from his family. He is to begin an apprenticeship as a bookbinder, a vocation that arouses fear, superstition, and prejudice among their small community, but when neither he nor his parents can afford to refuse. For as long as he can recall, Emmett has been drawn to books, even though they are strictly forbidden. Bookbinding is a sacred calling. The bookbinder, Serodith, informs her new apprentice, and he is a binder born. Under the old woman's watchful eye, Emmett learns to handcraft the elegant leather-bound volumes. Within each one, they will capture something unique and extraordinary, a memory. If there's something you want to forget, a binder can help. If there's something you need to erase, they can assist. Within the pages of the books they create, secrets are concealed and the past is locked away. In a vault under Serodith's workshop, 
Rows upon rows of books filled with memories are meticulously stored. But while Serdith is an artisan, there are others of their kind, avaricious and immoral tradesmen who use their talents for dark ends. And just as Emmett begins to settle into his new circumstances, he makes an astonishing discovery. There is a book with his name on it. Soon everything he thought he understood about his life will be dramatically rewritten. Does that not sound amazing? Book binding that like takes away memory and erases memory and maybe he's erased his memory or someone else has or he like had it erased and yes I'm I'm here for it I'm here for it but the real the real the real cherry on top and this is also the reason that made me like perk up my ears and be like wait maybe I do want to read this more than I thought I did is that it's actually got a main or the main romance is gay <laughs> um why isn't that advertised more with this book I don't know but yes I actually found out about this book like I'd seen it, I'd heard about it, but I found out about it from a Reddit thread where they were talking about queer romances and sci-fi and fantasy and they're like The Binding and I was like, The Binding? I've seen that book. Is it gay? And apparently it is gay and I, um, I'm here for it. More, more queer content and sci-fi and fantasy. Please and thank you. Also, it's my favorite, one of my favorite novels is The Starless Sea and this 100% reminds me of The Starless Sea just like the bookishness of it I guess if that makes sense so another mark in its favor really looking forward to this one don't know when I'm gonna get to it though I really want to get to it this year um I have no idea when <laughs> The Octopus Man by Jasper Gibson I'm pretty sure this one is not published in the U.S. which sad I had to order this from Waterstones and I actually saw a book review for it on YouTube and I'm so sorry I'm totally blanking on the YouTuber's name I'm gonna put it here and also link it down below so you can go check out his channel but The Octopus Man when I heard the description I was like this sounds very much like a me book and it kind of reminded me of Matt Haig's stories not the Midnight Library I haven't read that but like the humans it kind of gave me like the humans vibes so let's read let's read the description once an outstanding law student Tom is now lost in the machinery of the British mental health system talking to a voice no one else can hear the voice of Malamoc the octopus god sometimes loving, sometimes cruel, but always there to guide him through life. After a florid psychotic break, the pressure builds for Tom to take part in an experimental drugs trial that promises to silence that voice forever. But no one, least of all Tom, is prepared for what happens when the octop octopus god is seriously threatened. Deeply moving and tragicomic, the octopus man takes us into the complex world of voice hearing in the bravura literary performance that asks the fundamental question about belief, meaning, and love. So it's not my typical read, but from what I understand, Tom is very much convinced it's real and this book makes you question, well, even if it's not like real, the fact that it's real to him makes it real. And how do you weigh that? How do you value that? You know, how do you see that? And I love asking those questions. I think it's really important to ask those questions. Even though I have no experience with the British healthcare system, the healthcare system in America is fucked up and most healthcare systems are just fucked up. People don't get the care they need. And I think that is also something that deserves criticism. So yeah, really excited for this one. I think the fact that it reminded me of like The Humans by Matt Haig is what drew me to it and makes me think it's going to be a five star along with all these big questions. It very much gives the sense to me that it's going to sort of straddle the line between real and not imaginary, but not like solid, like something that exists like subconsciously or beyond conscious, if that makes sense. So yeah, really, really looking forward to this one. Again, not sure when I'm gonna read it. Definitely do wanna make it this year though. This is the only classic on the list and I was actually going to read it soon. Like it was gonna be my next, I was gonna finish the book I had been reading and then pick this one up, but uh, my heart is just not ready and I know it's going to wound my heart when I read it. And that book is Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh, classic. The movie makes my heart hurt though. And I just am not in a place to feel that right now. <laughs> but the most nostalgic and reflective of Evelyn Waugh's novels, Bridehead, Brides Had Revisited, looks back to the Golden Age before the Second World War. It tells the story of Charles Ryder's infatuation with the flights and the rapidly disappearing world of privilege they inhabit. Enchanted first by Sebastian at Oxford, then by his doomed Catholic family, in particular his remote sister Julia, Charles comes finally to recognize his spiritual and social distance from them. So that's a pretty I feel like good overview of what it's about it's also about like repressed sexuality the just 
I think that that's why it wounds my heart. It's very hard to watch these relationships, you know. Um, I don't know how the book is going to tackle it, although I do understand the book. I mean, it, it is about that as well. It's also about not not quite fitting in anywhere, I think, so that's also going to hurt. Um, I'm really excited for this one. I know I'm going to love it. It actually came onto my radar through an article I read years ago. I say years ago, but it probably was only two years ago. But in The Magicians, there is a character, Elliot, I think his last name is Wa, Elliot Wa. And in the book, The Magicians, his sexual, I think he's in the books, is he gay or bi? I don't 100% remember. He's queer. In the show, they actually take that and they make it a lot more prominent. And the article had been talking about how the Brides had revisited and other Evelyn Waugh books had influenced the magicians and in particular Elliot's character and how it was then you know seeing a sort of fulfillment in the way that he's portrayed in the tv show and it just made me go this book sounds good I should read it and yeah and I have read one or two of Evelyn Waugh's short stories don't remember which ones I think they were both world war ii based it was for a class um and I liked the writing I do remember that much so I'm really excited for this it's gonna be a five star. I just, I have the feeling flipping through it. The language is just beautiful. I don't want to spoil myself, but I have seen the film, so it's not like a spoiler, spoiler. But I just, yeah. I just, I, I'm not ready for the emotional turmoil it's going to put me through. Not even turmoil, it just feels like someone's slicing at your skin. So, and then the final book that I have physically that has been sitting on my shelf and I cannot wait to read, and I know it's going to be five stars, is Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Look at this book. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. There's no reason I've been putting this off. I want to read it. I know I'm going to love it. I have no good reason for putting it off. The binding is coming apart a little bit, but that's whatever. Let's, let's, just, let's just read. A world of item. A, whoa, huh? <laughs> a world divided. A queendom without an heir. An ancient enemy awakens. The house of Barathnet has ruled Innis for a thousand years. Still unwed, Queen Sabrin the Ninth must, must conceive a daughter to protect her realm from destruction, but assassins are getting closer to her door. Eadrian is an outsider at court. Though she has risen to the position of lady-in-waiting, she is loyal to a hidden society of mages. Eid keeps a watchful eye on Sabrin, secretly protecting her with forbidden magic. Across the Dark Sea, Tane has trained all her life to be a dragon rider, but is forced to make a choice that could see her life unravel. Meanwhile, the divided East and West refuse to parley, and forces of chaos are rising from their sleep. Guys. Guys. Doesn't it sound so good? First of all, it's a standalone fantasy novel. I know Samantha Shannon has talked about setting things in, like, a wider world, but I love that. Interconnected standalone fantasy novels that are, like, this bulky are something I love and wish there were more of. I'm all for a long series, but I think that if you can condense, like, con condense a story into one text, I think that's great. I think that is so cool, and I think that it still allows you to play around in the world, right, on a wider scale. So just the format super entices me. I really like the Bone Season series uh, by Samantha Shannon, so have good feelings about this. I've heard this is even better. It's queer. It's gay. There's a lot of that going on. Always for it. And it's feminist. So, I mean, all of these things just make it a five-star read, I'm assuming. When am I going to get to it? Hopefully soon, actually. I really do want to read it. And I've been like, now that I've been like away from memory, sorrow, and thorn for a while, I'm like, I really want a big fantasy. So this, uh, this might be sooner, sooner than later, actually. Now that I'm putting in words, I'm just kind of like, I should, I should read that now, huh? I should read that now. Okay, but uh, books that are not out yet. I'm pulling up my laptop so that I can grab their descriptions. And, um, oh my god, one of them actually comes out tomorrow. So it'll be out by the time this video goes up. Ah, goodness. I'm so excited. First of all, First Become Ashes by K.M. Spara. I have been waiting for this book since I finished Docile. Docile was one of my favorite reads of last year. I absolutely loved it. It was so good. Definitely heavier sci-fi and fantasy. Well, not fantasy, but definitely heavier sci-fi. Tossel is sort of dystopian, but honestly, it deals a lot with sexual politics, with consensual politics, with capitalism. It's really good. Definitely look up the trigger warnings before you read it. And I think I've heard the same things about First Become Ashes. Definitely look up trigger warnings if you're worried about anything. Uh, honestly, at this point, I'm just like, uh, give it to me. 
I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm going to assume bad things happen. I'm going to prepare myself. I am ready. So um, let me let me read you the description. This comes out tomorrow. Okay, this comes out tomorrow. I hope my copy arrives tomorrow. I hope it arrives today. I will drop everything else I'm reading to read First Become Ashes. I've been waiting for this book. You have no idea. Oh my god, I tried so hard to get an arc and it did not work out. The Fellowship raised Lark to kill monsters. His partner betrayed them to the feds, but Lark knows his magic is real and he'll do anything to complete his quest. K.M. Spara follows Docile, one of the most anticipated science fiction novels of 2020 with First Become Ashes, a fantastic standalone adventure that blends pain and pleasure and will make readers question what is real and what is magical. Lark spent the first 24 years, 9 months, and 3 days of his life training for a righteous quest, to rid the world of monsters. Alongside his partner Kane, he wore the cage and endured the scourge in order to protect his innate magic. He never thought that when Kane left, he'd next see him in the company of FBI agents and a SWAT team. He never dreamed that the leader of the Fellowship of the Anointed would be brought up on charges of abuse and assault. He never expected the government would tell him that the monsters aren't real, that there is no magic, and all the pain was for nothing. Lark isn't ready to give up. He is determined to fulfill his quest to defeat the monsters he was promised. Along the way, he will grapple with the past, confront love, and discover his long buried truth. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So, like, I think it's five stars because um, I love to docile. And if this is even half as good as docile, I'm gonna love it. It's gonna be five stars. That really no more needs to be said. I'm so excited for this. I think there's like a character he meets who's like really into cosplay and that's the love interest and I'm also really excited for that. Um, yeah, give me more. Give me more. After this, uh, Kim Spara is I think publishing a book that's like the sequel to a short story he wrote about a vampire. So um, yeah, give me that as well. Give me that as well. Is that here yet? I want them all. I, if you can't tell, if you can't tell, I'm a uh, big Cam Spara fan. Big fan. Big fucking fan, man. This, oh, oh my god. There, there is gonna be a, uh, I think it's gonna be like a 24, 48 hour reading vlog for uh, First Become Ashes. So, um, <laughs> so excited. I'm so excited. God, I'm so weird. Okay, so the next, the next one um, is Mr. Impossible by Maggie Steve Otter. This one comes out on May 18th. So I have a little bit longer to wait for this one, and it is the sequel to Call Down the Hawk. Side note, don't love the cover. Don't hate the cover. I feel like it fits the book really well. I just don't think it matches the first cover really well. That's my thoughts on that. What is it about? Um, I'm not gonna say because it is a sequel. I don't want to like, whoa, it's a helicopter. Goodbye. Um, I don't want to say because I don't want to risk spoiler. Spoil I don't want to risk spoiling. Spoiling book one, Call Down the Hawk, which was really good. So yeah, I think the fact that it's more Rodin content, whom I love. I really like Hennessy. It was Jordan Hennessy, right? Is that her name? I really liked her as a character too. No, mm, I say no more. I liked all the characters in this one. The cliffhanger at the end of book one killed me. I feel like I've been waiting forever for book two, but it's a wait that I think is going to be very much worth it. So Mr. Impossible. Here we come. I can't wait. There'll probably be a reading vlog for this one as well, just just because of how excited I am. All right, the next one, The Nation Spile by C.J. Merwild, who you probably know from all the wonderful art that they put out. Um, this is the first novel in the Lost Faces series. And honestly, I've been kind of like, yeah, this sounds good. This sounds like right up my alley. But I don't know. When I was like going through the list, I was like, I there's something about it and this one is harder to put my finger on exactly why than the others but there's just something about it maybe it's the way that the author talks about it i don't know i just am really excited for it so the description the gods smiled upon their offspring from the skies loving generous but that was before for the skies now tainted and the people deprived of their creators overnight have been orphans for nearly two centuries since that fateful day the corruption has reigned over the world it defiled the clouds covered the lands with a veil of darkness the first conflicts arose in the east of the Cormoran continent, some under the impulse of beliefs called for, calling for blood and flames. As hatred continues to spread, the vanished gods no longer answering any prayers, some fight for a peaceful life. In the midst of this madness, two children meet each other. One of them is human, the other is Nishan. The boys are two opposite minds and fates, yet connected irrevocably. The days, then the passing years, bring them together, but life reminds them of their, in, of their differences and works to crush the remnants of their innocence. Between joys and sorrows, friendship and savagery, a smile is sometimes enough to change anything. It sounds really good. It gives me sort of nostalgic feelings. This is more like new adult, adult content. There are a lot of trigger warnings listed. But 
it gives me nostalgic feelings for the kind of thing I would have been drawn to as a child work or child friendly and yeah maybe that's one of the reasons I'm super excited for it there is also art in this book and I cannot I cannot wait books with art in it is a trend that I want to just take off because it um it elevates the story so much so much all right let's let's be real so much so yes uh really excited for this one I have the special edition pre-ordered from Fake Crate I don't think I'm gonna feel the urge to have to read this right away I can wait until the book comes in rather than like having multiple copies pre-ordered but I'm, I'm pretty excited I'm pretty excited all right so this next one I don't know this shouldn't surprise you <laughs> if you've been watching my channel before if you've seen any of vlogs because I talk about it a lot but uh Empire of Vampire by Jay Kristoff comes out September 14th I, I can't wait I have so many copies pre-ordered this is my most anticipated read of the year hands down I don't even have to think about it like I, can't, I cannot wait for this book. It's good. It's, I'm so excited. All right. I'm so excited. So the official description. From holy cup comes holy light, the faithful hand set world aright. And in the seven martyrs' sight, mere man shall end this endless night. It has been 27 long years since the last sunrise. For nearly three decades, vampires have waged war against humanity, building their eternal empire even as they tear it down. Tear, even as they tear down our own. Now only a few tiny sparks of light endure in the sea of darkness. Gabriel de Leon is a silver saint a member of a holy brotherhood dedicated to defending realm and church from the creatures of the night. But even the silver order couldn't stem the tide once daylight fails us, and now only Gabriel remains. Imprisoned by the very monsters he vowed to destroy, the last silver saint is forced to tell his story, a story of legendary battles and forbidden love, of lost faith and friendships won, of the wars of blood and the forever king, and the quest of humanity's last remaining hope, the Holy Grail. Reasons I'm excited for this book. J. Kristoff is the author. Vampires. J. Kristoff writing vampires is going to be bloody and gory and I love it. It's a master apprentice story. It's being told in the sort of frame story that Name of the Wind is told, where Gabriel is telling his story to someone else over the course of, I think, four days, Jay has said. There's going to be art in it. There are more reasons, but those are the clearest. <laughs> so we're just going to stick there. It, this is going to be five stars. I don't know how it couldn't be. There's really not a reality where it's not five stars. Watch me just like prove myself wrong with that, but there, pff, no, pff, it's gonna be five stars. Editing Sam here. So there's been a lot going on with Jay Kristoff and uh, he's been accused of some horrible things and it feels really weird to be supporting him now. Um, I recorded this way before all that started really coming out and I still wanted to get this video up, which is why this section is still in here. There's gonna be further elaboration down in the description box. But suffice it to say, this is probably the last time I'm really going to feature him or any of his books on this channel. As someone who promotes books, I seriously consider it a responsibility of mine to not promote something or someone who is a toxic or bad person. That doesn't mean I'm necessarily not going to be reading his new book. That's something that I'm going to have to continue to grapple with on a personal level. When I read, I tend to see it very much as like the author is dead and this book exists outside of whoever created it. But that doesn't mean that I have to support him on video and sort of like, I don't think give him clout. This is a very tiny channel, but I'm not interested in supporting an author vocally like that as much as I am supporting an author who is, you know, not maybe doing really shady bad things. And then last but not least, Dark Rise by C.S. Pack Packet. Is that how you say your last name? Packet? Uh, Dark Rise by C.S. Packet coming out September 28th. I've never read anything by C.S. Packet. I haven't read Fence. I haven't read Captive Prince. I do want to read both of those. They're like on my radar. They're just nothing that I feel like the urge to read. But Dark Rise just is. It's similar to Nation Smile and that it gives me like nostalgic feelings. This feels 100% like something I would have pretended to play at as a child and that's definitely a draw for me so what's it what's the official description 16 year old doc boy will is on the run pursued by the men who killed his mother then an old servant tells him of his destiny to fight besides the stewards who have sworn to protect humanity if the dark king ever returns will is thrust into a world of magic where he starts training for a vital role in the oncoming battle against the dark as london is threatened and old enmities awakened Will must stand with the last tears of the light to prevent the fate that destroyed the world from returning to destroy his own. Yes. Low-key, it kind of also sounds like, um, 
like Legendborn a little bit, how they're like the descendants of King Arthur's knights and they, they like get like aspects of the knights. I don't want to spoil that book too much because it's really good, but it gives me that kind of vibe as well. And um, yes, just it sounds great. I think the cover also is doing a really good job of making me be like, I want to read that. I really want to read that and I'm really going to love it. Um, that nostalgia factor is definitely huge in why I think it's going to be five stars though. Like I said with all of these, it's really a feeling. It's like a gut feeling. And this is no less of that either. So that's it for me. That's, those are my five star prediction books. Have you read any of these? Are you excited for any of these? Do you think any of these are going to be five stars for you? What books do you think are going to be five stars? Like, let me know down in the comments. Let's talk. I think it's really interesting how you can kind of like feel like a book is going to be five stars for you even before you get to it. And it, it makes it even more crushing when it's not, right? Like it makes it so crushing when you get to it and it's just not five stars. I've had that experience already this year. I I've had some really disappointing reads, but I've also had some books where I'm like, I knew I was gonna love it. And the fact that I loved it made me love it even more, I guess, like it just, it, it's just shining even brighter. So I've had both experiences this year. Hopefully I'm, I'm, I'm right that I at least like these books a lot. I think I'm gonna love them, but hopefully I at least like them. Hopefully none of them are major disappointments. That's, that's it. That's what I'm going to leave you guys with that. So thank you for sticking around. Once again, if you liked this, subscribe so you can see more of me and my face and my content. That sounds so conceited, but you know, <laughs> it does. It just sounds conceited. There's nothing else to say after that. All right. Well, you have a great day. Stay safe. Working on my outros and intros still. Can you tell? Bye.